on the coming home podcast, I kind of feel like, um, I didn't know what home was for you, Trey, until I've seen you in your natural habitat courtside. <laughs> that feels like that is home for you now. It's, it's no. over. Like you can't claim Compton anymore. You can't claim, uh, w- Phoenix or whatever. Your home court is the home court courtside. That's it. <laughs> How does it feel? I mean, look, I'm not going to, I'm not going to, um, dumb down that experience. <laughs> it's it's a great experience. It's, it's probably one of the best best experiences in basketball you possibly could could experience, especially at one of the most uh, exciting arenas in the country. The Mecca. The Mecca. Yes, Madison okay. Square Garden. Um, pretty pricey seat. Um, and. I mean, I've, I've, I've been to Lakers games. I've been to teams that were actually good and contending for something, and I nothing rivals. And not, I mean, you know, the Knicks are they're, they're they're trying their best to be with trying to reach their potential once they get healthy. But um, it doesn't matter that ticket sells regardless. Um, but there's no experience because no no experience like it because um, the players bring their best to put on their show in front of those fans because they know they Trey's enjoy right. it. Yeah. yeah. You know, speaking of the crowd, Trey. So, so f- one game we had Trey and Jerry, right? Yeah. We mm-hmm. had, we had Jerry getting dapped up by Zion, a little recruiting, a mm-hmm. little mm-hmm. extracurricular. Come mm-hmm. home, Zion coming home podcast. And then we had Jamal, Jamal Crawford. So mm-hmm. I think, I think, uh, you said you you had it was what it was you it was Jerry and then it was Heidi Gardner from SNL in the front row and uh was it uh, Ego what's her name Ego Nuotum yeah so, Ego so the uh, SNL contingent and, uh, Brent Fias yeah. and Tracy Morgan that was with Jerry your boy Tracy again yeah 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 <laughs> is he mm-hmm. is he getting in the league is that happening you know what um and and I'm glad that y'all brought this up because again. I'm going to, I'm going to, this is a a whole thing in itself. Celebrities don't remember people. They don't remember civilians. They They remember other celebrities. They remember other celebrities, but they don't remember other civilians. I've met Tracy Morgan three times. Mm. I've texted Tracy Morgan twice. No. Mm. Tracy Morgan responds to my text, but sees me in person and don't know who the fuck I am. (laughs) <laughs> you get what I'm saying? I he's, introduced him, he's introduced himself multiple times. First of all, I met Tracy Morgan the first time with Wilson Chandler. Mm-hmm. This was the last month, not last month, the month before last when I went to the game with him. How many court? Yeah, let's get for the record your game log here. So you've been to three, how many? Three, three games, three games in the span of uh, six weeks. Okay, okay, yeah. And you mm-hmm. went with Wilson Chandler the first time. Yep. Yep, I remember that. Then you went with Jerry on Monday and Jamal on Thursday. <laughs> okay, damn. Wow. Yeah. Um, so uh again, these are these are and that's the thing. My day wasn't even going like that. I didn't think I was having a good day. Uh Jamal texted me and was like, Hey, what you doing? I'm like, I ain't doing nothing. I'm chilling at the house, bro. What's good? He's like, You wanna go to the game? I'm like, what time? He like Start at 7 30. <laughs> it's four or something right now. So I'm like, all right, bro. But I noticed I me, I checked the schedule and it's a TNT game. So I'm like, is he just giving me tickets just to go to the game? Cause I'm not going. If I'm just that's a whole nother thing. I don't go to games no more. Mm. You get what I'm saying? Like as a like just going to a game just to go to the game, like nah. Mm-hmm. I'd be literally going to the game and like hang out with my friends. Like it's just quality time. Like it's like getting a beer. It's like, you know what I mean? Like it's like that, playing that, golf. It's like playing uh, golf. You know what I mean? It's a business mm-hmm. friendship opportunity. Mm-hmm. I feel like now you've played Augusta and now you're just not going to play any Muni golf courses right. anymore. Mm-hmm. You're done. <laughs> you, you're only going to go play Pebble Beach. You're going to play. No, I'll, I'll go to the game. I just can't go to a game by myself. I don't enjoy that because I have to listen to the the, the casual, 
the ultra fan, the diehard. And it, the takes are just too much for me to be surrounded by. Yeah. You know what I mean? Well, yeah. Yeah. It's like, fire that guy. That guy's a bum. <laughs> you know, and like New York crowd is like, they into it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. They will, you trash, you know what I mean? And not some nice things. Of course, I experience it a little different. You know what I mean? It, half the time, some of the people that say, of course, I don't know who playing. They don't know who going. Somebody going to get up and go shake somebody's hand during a TV timeout. The stuff that you don't normally see. You know what I mean? The popcorn, in New York. Taste, the popcorn tastes a little different. The halftime dinner is a little different. Like Michael Strahan came and had dinner with us. You know what I mean? Like, that's just different. Like, you're not even going to get that type of experience. You know what I mean? You're not going to get to say what's up to Bernard King or Latrell Sprewell or... Uh, see my Dylan, Dylan for 36 Libby. minutes right now is you know what I mean? on, no, no, I'm just, I'm just, I'm just, I'm just, I'm just, I want to hear the names. I want to hear who you're hanging out with. Cause I'm not there and you're there. And Heidi Gardner, did she give you any, any sort of insights or you know what's uh, crazy? Le- I didn't know who Heidi Gardner was. Yeah. I, 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 I know who, the, I know who them were like this way. Only person I yeah. knew, I, I knew Tracy Morgan was sitting two spots on the side mm-hmm. and he was giving them advice. About oh yeah. you know like oh yeah what's the name's back over there y'all gonna love working with her you know he he animated his shit but he like da 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 and then they like Brent Fire is like hey can you tap them I'm just a middle guy I don't even supposed to be here they don't know what I do. <laughs> I could own Apple they don't know they ain't even ignore it. like I'm just sitting there but you're, you're texting with Tracy there's no way and he doesn't know who you are face face to face there's no way Heidi and Ego know who you are they're never gonna know and the funny thing about it. Spike, my man. Spike, my man. I got shit from Spike. Don't even know who I am. Spike don't know who I now am. Now they do. I they all do Spike, now. Listen, yeah. I text Spike that picture that I posted. I was like, oh, this shit to come get framed. I'm thinking, man said, thank you. <laughs> 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 so don't be offended if nobody wants to sign your shit or actually don't talk to you. Because they don't, there's people that they got their number, they don't even fucking know. Mm-hmm. They just, in a, they in a uh, different world, bro. They in a different world. And I had to check myself sometimes because I got some friends that are like, up there and like I treat them like hey bro why you not responding to me but like not thinking like yo they got mad shit going on yeah like they're overly famous like to a point where it's like it ain't Michael Jackson famous but it's famous like you know and I'll be I'll be waiting on a text like damn bro ain't replying yeah. yet what's going on you know what I mean versus we have way more time than them but Michael Jackson didn't have a cell phone mm. that's true He's for smart. most of his fame, you know, like he's smart. It's, it's tougher. It, it, you feel more famous if you're in a cell phone era where you got, you know, infinite mm-hmm. Instagram notifications every time you do anything, or thousands of people texting you. Like you got Tracy Morgan texting you or FaceTiming you. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But yeah, the so the spike encounter, the the puffy vest, the puffy mm-hmm. custom vest. Well, how'd that look in person? Oh, it's it amazing. Shout out to the designer. Um, yeah, it was cool. But I was just in a candid moment. And you know, it's a funny thing about it. I got up like, oh, bro, about to acknowledge me. Mm-hmm. It was not that at all. He was looking up at Jamal. <laughs> it was not at that. It was not at that at all. I'm waiting. Yeah. I'm waiting. It was just the conversation. I'm right there. Yeah. Well, did, you, have- uh, did you, did um- you, um, like, what is Jamal's uh, in, at Madison Square Garden? Because he's a beloved dude everywhere mm-hmm. he goes, but especially at the Garden with his tenure with the Knicks versus Jerry Ferrar versus Wilson Chandler. Like, what are the interactions with fans oh. in like the 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 golf wave at fans courtside and stuff? I think it's a, I think between sports and like acting actors and stuff are different because athletes are like larger than life, especially if you played a huge role in like the development of the nostalgia and the the feeling. Mm. So you got people who will say anything like, Oh my God, yo, you're my favorite player. And I'm like, for real? I don't know. Like that's kind (laughs) of questionable, right? Like you've had Melo play here. You've had Derrick Rose play. Really? But you never know because Jamal had such, he made so many amazing plays. He was even short term with the Lord, the Warriors. He was able to like mm-hmm. still have some type of imprint 
Oh, you know yeah. What I mean? So, yeah. But he, but the thing is about all the people that I went to the games with, they know everybody from the person to the elevator for the person that greets you at the four pin entrance to the fucking person that's been taking photos for 15 years. That's they, when you truly have made it. Yeah. How are your kids? You mm-hmm. know what I mean? Like that dude right there gave me my first, you know, photo. I remember, you know, he took this like they remember everything and they treat them like, you know, like, and I think that's the, the best part of that whole experience is seeing the mutual love for each other. It's not like, oh, I'm famous. And I don't know. No, they really like got relationships with these people. So it's like, it's dope to be like, oh, okay. And then, you know, obviously the love is reciprocated because one of the ladies that she's like the main, I guess, um, celebrity or influencer host. She said, you again, you was just here with, uh, and she's like snapping her fingers. He remembered it's, you. It's, you it's again. Getting, it's getting to a point where, you know, I got a familiar face. And now it was even better because like, I think um, Dustin Hoffman's son, right? Jerry introduced me to bruh. I don't really know him like that, but I introduced him. This was my social currency. Mm, I introduced uh, him to Jamal. So it's like, here, bro. Oh, you met Jamal? Hold on. You know, mm. and it was like, all right, bro, actually cool. So I'm not getting tr- the next time. It's like he cool. Yep. You yeah. got to kind of like make your waves that way. But um, like I say, great experience. If you can sit courtside anywhere, it doesn't have to be at the garden. Do it just because you get to hear the trash talk. You get to hear the banter with the refs. You get to just see all the crazy shit that you wouldn't see on TV. Um, and that's always it, cool. It's it's uh when they move media off the floor. And up into like the upper bowls, yep. it changed. It changed a lot of the coverage. Yep, because it's it's not just uh, getting closer view, like you said. You hear so mm-hmm. much more. Mm-hmm. Like you said, the, the coaches' conversations, the banter with the referees, mm-hmm. like you get such a more textured feel for the locker room, mm-hmm. the interpersonal relationships, the dynamics, mm-hmm. and you get a lot more color in your stories. Yep. When you're on the floor, but man, like you said, they're pricey tickets. They got a lot of revs from mm-hmm. uh, from selling those tickets rather than giving it to a media member. So there's only a couple places in in media that you can still sit courtside, and there's a good reason for that. Is because uh, yeah, Phoenix they got to make way for the trays of the world. Phoenix mm-hmm. used to take care of me when I was with the athletic. They would have me right there, mm. right there. You know what I mean? Yeah, um, Phoenix is one of them. Yep. So I mean, celebrity well, role is a good one. You feel like you feel like next time you go, Tracy's gonna remember you. I, I invited him to co- uh, be assistant coach for my team on the fourteenth, so we'll see. You didn't um, answer did. my question. You didn't answer my question. <laughs> you feel He's, like I, yeah? If they meet outside the garden. He might have a shot. I don't think. I don't think I'm gonna. I don't think I'm gonna go back for the rest of the year. I don't. I don't see it. I don't see it planned. But I, I mean, sure, if someone okay. invites me, I just so don't have that. I don't have that initially. Like, hey, we gotta go. You know what I mean? Like, because I, I like again, these aren't planned. These are just like people that are going to the game. And I'm usually, since I'm so locked into the like the game, I can be like, hey, bro, you don't know about uh Facinco? You don't know about such and such? He nice. He got get because I watch bag, I watch all the games. I'm not media anymore, but like I watch all the games. So I'm still in tune and I can be like, oh, okay, you know, like, yeah. What do you think about this move? Blah, blah, blah. Like, you know, and we talk about so many different things. So I think that's pretty cool. Trey, you're going to be a regular before you know. You're going to say you're not going back this. Mm -hmm. You never know who's going to text you at four o'clock on a Tuesday. Um, And if Jalen Brunson's out, it might be easier to get some of those tickets. Hope he gets back. And it's just a little bruise. And we get some good news on Jalen Brunson and that knee injury. We're going to talk a lot about basketball here. We're going to have a great episode for you. We're going to talk about LeBron's 40,000 and his post-game comments about an 18-year-old person that uh, an acquaintance of his, 18-year-old LeBron. So LeBron on LeBron in third person. We're going to talk about that on the show. We're also going to talk uh, Draymond Green and his uh, defensive strategy gone wrong. Was it actually his defensive strategy? And what does it say about the Warriors um, and the Celtics going forward when the Celtics just put up, what, 140 to 89 or whatever it was. Mm-hmm. Insane. Uh, we're also going to talk Caitlin Clark. She is uh, going to the league. She is declared for the W, and she will be an Indiana uh, 
player next year going number one. And we're going to talk Caitlin and all she's been doing. Um, and also for the Patreon, we are going to go deep into the Phoenix Suns. Uh, KD had some interesting comments after the game about getting double teamed. We're going to have some numbers and some insight on the uh, the Phoenix Suns. Now it looks like they're going to have at least a week without Devin Booker due to an ankle injury. So we'll do that for the Patreon. Go to patreon.com slash count the dings. And you will hear that in full, just as we do every episode on the Coming Home podcast. You know who's coming home? Who's coming home? Is all of the haters on LeBron James. Ah. That is a lot of, lot of material here. Even after 40,000, um, I remember like after the game, most of the people in my group chats are not talking about the achievement. They're talking about the post-game press conference, which is where we're at with LeBron, where it feels like... Um, no matter what he does, Trey, it feels like the conversation around LeBron is less about the achievement and more about his, I don't know, his branding or his marketing and where he sits in among the greats in the conversation that he spins himself. So I did a post on the finder, Trey. I don't know if you saw this, but the consistency of LeBron's scoring. Ben Golliver had an incredible post where after the game, he had this graph that showed like a straight line of LeBron scoring throughout his career is just, it, it doesn't move. It mm-hmm. is incredible. His consistency as a scorer, he's just 27 a night, every night for the last 20 years. Mm-hmm. And I thought that was cool. Um, so I did a little post on TomTheFinder.com about comparing his consistency versus some other incredible feats like Wayne Gretzky's points record, um, also did Emmett Smith's rushing yards. Um, also did Pete Rose hit record and a couple others I could have done. I was just, it was Sunday morning. I needed to tend to the girls, right? Mm-hmm. All of that was cool. And then I saw the post game press conference. Let's roll the tape. Hey, LeBron, there's a commercial in which you talk to your younger self. In reality, what would you tell 18 year old LeBron about the journey to becoming an Olympic gold medalist, a four-time champion, and now scoring 40,000 points? Um, I wouldn't tell him anything, honestly, because 18-year-old LeBron had a great head on his shoulders. He just did. I, I just, he just, he was put in a position where I, I wouldn't wish too many 18-year-old kids to be put into. Um, but he, um, he just had his head, his head in, a, in, a, in the best possible position. He was raised the right way by his mother. He was raised the right way by his uh, little league coaches. Um, he was held accountable by his friends. Um, he met a young lady um, in high school that held him down um, as well. And, um, and then he just told himself, if you want to make a, a real name for yourself and, and your last name and your family and your friends and your city, um, the only way it's going to happen if you just stay focused and maintain focus and put in the work. Um, besides my family and my friends and my city, and then some people in my city as well, because we even we even know some of them people. To be quite honest with you, everybody wanted to see me fail when I got to the league. Everybody was just like, it's not, it's no way he's going to be able to exceed you know, the expectations that's put upon him. There's no way I seen for the first time in a long time, I seen a um, commercial that was played before my first game. And when I rewatched it today for the first time, I was like, I think they was mentioning like all the greats that ever played a ba- uh, the game of basketball. I think it was like Big O and Michael and Kareem and Kobe and I forgot who all else was in that commercial, whatever the case may be. Could be wrong about some of the names that I mentioned, but it was, and then it was like, and the next one, LeBron James, and I'm, and I didn't even see that commercial when it happened. But I was like watching the day. I was like, "What the hell?" <laughs> like that expectation on an 18 year old kid, like that was, that was insane to just think about. It. And I was watching it today. I was like, I, I wish that on no kid <laughs> in no sport to have to have this type yeah. of pressure put on them, and everybody wanting to see you fail. So. Um, I wouldn't tell that 18 year old kid nothing. I would tell him just to do exactly what you're thinking, no matter what, just stay true to yourself, believe in yourself and, uh, don't ever get too high. Um, you get too high. They're going to try to knock you off. Um, 
But at the same time, if you if you fall, just like the great late, uh, later Leah says, just pick yourself up and try again. And uh, now I've done that in my career. Wow. A lot to unpack there. I want to start with him talking about his 18-year-old self, but then saying that his 18-year-old self had to talk to himself. Yeah. This is Inception, LeBron. It's like the The conversation is about the conversation within the conversation. And it's it was jarring to hear him start with the whole third-person rhetoric. And then he went on for like three minutes. It almost felt like, and not to go all Illuminati on you, I don't know who asked that question, but it did feel like that was a rehearsed response, that he was waiting to have that question because it went in a lot of different directions and it felt like he had to get that story about watching a commercial that was predicting he was going to be great, an all-time great. And yet LeBron is using that anecdote as an example of why no one thought he was going to be good, that everyone thought he was going to fail, rooting for him to fail. Which one is it? Which one is it that no one thought he was going to be good and rooting for him to fail? And Or is it that they were rooting for him to be the next great player? And there were campaigns, Nike ads, millions of dollars to root, rooting for LeBron James to be the next Michael, right? I'm exhausted talking about this. <laughs> I've... I've, I've um... I didn't see. Thanks, Maze, for that. By the way, I hadn't seen the full clip because someone like etched out that one part. Mm-hmm. There's a there's a there's a part a chunk missing that's floating. Um, so that was the full clip, and I'm glad I got to see that. Um, but it didn't change my mind. You know what I mean? Um, yeah, I mean, again, I know I come off as the biggest LeBron hater, sure, but I don't. I don't think it's. I think. I'm being me offering opinions. I think I'm being me offering like my opinion as a fan and overall watching the game of basketball and understanding all those, although there are flaws in LeBron James game, he is one of the greatest to ever suit it up. And I think people don't want, they just want to hear flat out praise. And I don't think that's how that shit works, but to hear some shit like that, like even the idea of like, yo, I don't want to wish, I wouldn't put any 18 year old in my position to have a $90 million deal before you even make a basket to have the keys handed to you. Thanks doc. Doc you know really I mean? set this in motion. This, I wouldn't wish this upon anybody. All right. Uh, give me the 15 million a year. Yeah. And then have the keys to a franchise, be able to fail or succeed. You have room for failure. You have young coaches, you have everybody to kind of like, set you up in this situation. It's, you have to deliver. Because again, I commend him for his longevity. I commend him for taking care of his body and not having any season-ending injuries that just really just took him off the map. This dude has been playing consistently. We're the same age. I can't do half the shit he's done. That's the uh, shit that yeah. blows my mind when I really but think he, about he all that. He can't sit courtside at New York. At he, MSG. He, he has yet to sit court side at MSG. So I don't know what to tell him. Like he got to catch up on that one, but <laughs> to be playing, not only after winning the finals or playing in the finals or being eliminated from playoffs, going into team USA basketball, not, you know what I mean? Like he had his first break like a few years ago, two years ago. So yeah. realistically, when you think about all this stuff and you think about the pace that he's going, even the not a score, um, like he's he's in it for himself at this point, right? It's it's LeBron versus LeBron because no one he I, I think the the fifth ring is out of there. That that's out. We that 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 shit that shit sailed. The next goal is to be top five in all these categories and at least try to get to a point where a lot of those things are unreachable and. Play as long as you can. Do you get what I'm saying? Like yeah. he's not going to peacefully walk off. You're gonna. The plans are not going very well right now, Trey. Because now we've got uh, Rich Paul coming out here and saying, Bronny 
he we're not demanding or expecting him to you know be a first round pick. It's fine if he's not a first round pick. We just want to pick the right situation for him. That's what matters here. And they're, you know, I guess soft peddling the Bronny leaving after the first year. Mike, um, I said Michael. Uh, LeBron saying, look, we need to leave this kid be. Even though LeBron was the one who said, man. He added all- the pressure. Bronny, Bronny's better than a lot of guys in the league right now. He tweeted mm-hmm. that from his own account. Yes. Put the expectations on his son and is now saying, hey, we, we put too much much expectations on him. Hold back. And now Rich Paul is, you know, trying to spin the the fall of Bronny this in the draft circles uh, and the mocks and all that, um, which is, I don't know. Uh, LeBron is is operating in a place where I don't think he's going to convert a lot of people away from the hater column to the LeBron stand column. I just don't, I don't think he just took, he won the scoring record, which was seemingly impossible and untouchable. And I don't think it moved the needle all that much in terms of the larger LeBron conversation. He gets 40,000 points and it doesn't, I don't think move the needle as much as you would think. If I told you 10 years ago that LeBron's going to be the all-time scoring leader and have 40,000 points, I feel like the GOAT conversation is going to be a lot more tilted towards LeBron than it is currently right now. And I think, man, this this press conference was a lot. This, this the, the 18-year-old self thing um, was very strange. It was very off-putting to listen to that in full. It wasn't just one line. It was like three minutes of it. And... I got to shout out my guy, Vinny Goodwill. Because oh, his am- column amazing today. Amazing column. Whole, I mean, he came with it. Like, this is a column. Headline, LeBron James flat out wrong and rewriting history after 40,000 point achievement. From Vincent Goodwill, senior NBA reporter for Yahoo Sports. Uh, the line, the bar is, perhaps he read the first page of his hat- haterography but didn't go beyond it because that simply isn't true. The idea that people were rooting for him to fail. Yeah. Yeah. Well, there's a couple of things to it where obviously that's a mentality for a lot of athletes, right? And, le- and Michael included, Maze. Yeah. Is, he, is, he, is, is he doing the Michael Jordan where you like lie and think that somebody said something that they didn't just to like... Go out and motivate. Isn't that a motivating? You have to find the chip, right? You have to find the hater. You have to have something to create, something to take personally. Charlie Rosen did right at that one spot where Charlie Rosen was like killing him as a as a high school player, and when he got drafted, it was like a whoop de doo. But like, is he just speaking specifically to Charlie Rosen? Because from what I remember, as a high school senior and a college freshman, we were all bought in. Mm-hmm. I was the same age. I was a peer and I bought in like, oh, I I got nothing else to say. Who going to yeah. stop, bro? All I wanted to see, and we all watched that first game against Sacramento on ESPN and was like. Real deal. He had 25, yeah. I think, that night. It was like, oh, he got 25 in the league. He going to be fine. Hit the ground running. Mm-hmm. He going to be fine. And it was already like, okay, cool. His shoe didn't have a problem being sold. Mm-hmm. Nike didn't have a problem putting an incredible amount of marketing around him. Like it wasn't a, it wasn't like they had to sell this villain. He wasn't a villain in the league until 2010. Like that's when people were really rooting for him to fail. He's got it mixed up. It's not 20, 2003, it, an 18 year old me. It was, you know, 25 year old me in Miami mm-hmm. when everybody wanted him to fail. I think that's more true than in 2003. But the myth-making continues. We got to pivot here to another clutch story is Draymond Green after uh, after getting blown out by epic proportions, national TV, the Golden State Warriors lost by 50-plus to the Boston Celtics, partly due to a defensive strategy where they were going to let Jalen Brown shoot and the rest of the Warrior shoot, and here's what Draymond said after the game. Well, I don't think we really played a, a full defensive strategy to we kind of dive into that. We, didn't implement, uh, we implemented our strategy like 15 minutes before, before we left the locker room. So 
I don't necessarily think we put together a full defensive strategy to debate on what they're doing uh, with their offense and how to stop it. But it's is there any is that a different approach than you were kind of used in the path against them or even in that first game in San Francisco? Well, I, I was at home that game, so I couldn't tell you much about that game plan. Um, <laughs> this beanie is yeah. ridiculous. Mm-hmm. Oh, well, we move on. So I, I thought it was fun to try. I was actually all for it. Like, let's try it. See if it works. If it don't, oh, well. Guns. Found something. All right, it ain't work. So we move on. It, is there a second half benefit to. Guys, yeah. You know, your main guy is just sad. Absolutely. Um, you know, it's been a long trip, especially with the, you know, the Toronto trip and stuff. So, it's okay. It was good. Sorry. What's the whole 15 minutes before tip thing? Why is he revealing that? Like, that seems... It's bullshit. He's, he's downplaying it's it, right? It's bullshit. It's like, oh, it's Eric. Like, listen, I just... A couple of days ago after the Knicks game, right? And I, again, I was talking to Jamal about this, and I was like, they really got it rolling post-All-Star break, right? Yep. They're looking good. They've mm-hmm. let Draymond get all his feelings out. He's done with all his stuff. Chris Paul's back. Moses Moody's confidence there. Pod's confidence there. Blah, 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 right? 13-3 and three before yesterday. Yeah. You get what I'm saying? And then you look at this situation, you're like, oh. Maybe we were even Clay's bought in to his role. He's bought in. Everything's and, rolling. Right. Everything's rolling. And you see this. Why can't you just say, Y'all got your ass kicked? Mm-hmm. Boston took this personally, despite regular season or not, because they still it still stings that they fumbled that finals, right? They got their ass cooked, kicked handily. And they're taking it personal, and y'all just treated it as a regular season game. And that's okay. But to yeah. say that, oh, we sagged off. Jalen Brown's an all-star, by the way. You didn't sag off. Even still, Derek White makes those shots. But yeah, you didn't this is sag off. Like, this is it's not, not the Grant Williams-Bucks game. Yeah. This isn't Nurk sagging off of Josh Giddy, right? Yeah, this is not that. Jalen Brown is averaging 20 plus and he's shooting 35% from three on serious volume. So it's not like he's he's Rudy Gobert out there. So Draymond uh basically giving him it's a sign of disrespect. It is a sign oh, of disrespect. And was- they challenged Jalen and he fucking crushed them. It was it 19 points in the first quarter? Yeah. And Jason Tatum followed up with 20 points in the second quarter. And they were they blinked and they were down 50 in the first half. Mm-hmm. So they got embarrassed. That was, that was before that was before Sam Hauser, Luke Cornett, and Peyton Pritchard came in and absolutely cooked the Warriors in the second quarter. It was terrifying. Yes. Luke Cornett was out there destroying Trace Jackson Davis, and he was only in there because Porzingis was sitting. It was a it was a massacre. It was tough. So I feel like I feel like the defensive strategy of letting those Celtics shoot because they love firing away from three. They have the, the highest three point rate in the NBA. And that's to a crit, uh, criticism in crunch time where they don't seem to get downhill and create and, and penetrate. Right. So the Warriors go, all right, we'll let them shoot. And they got lit up. So in the first game, the first matchup, uh, I think they took 59 three pointers and they shot like 27 percent on those. And it didn't work. Right. The Warriors win. And so. 15 minutes before they get out on the floor. Hey, right, let's do that again. Let's scrap everything and let's make them shoot. And it was a disaster. Mm-hmm. Um, so it, it seems like, like Steve Kerr said after the game, he's like, I don't even want to watch the film. I don't even, I don't even want to talk about this game. We're moving on. Interesting. They're just going to flush this one down the toilet. When uh, worst, li- you know, worst loss this season, by the way, for I mm-hmm. think any team, any team. I mean, yeah. it would have. It, it could have been worse. Even lose like that. They, yeah, there was. They weren't even playing in the second half, so it definitely could have been worse. But I, I do think you know, th- they are a little banged up. This was a long road trip. Like Pods is out, uh, and, and Wiggins is out, obviously. So I get it. It is funny. I when I was watching the game, I thought Draymond was perhaps doing that on his own and had some sort of like 
big brother, little brother, mental warfare with Jalen Brown. Mm-hmm. And I didn't, I, you know, if whether they, whether they've been working on that strategy for a week or like they said, 15 minutes for the game, they just said, let's roll it out. It was clearly Draymond was, was encouraging it and was enforcing it and saying, you know what? I'll let Dray- I'll let, I'm not even going to contest. I'm going to step back yeah. and let him shoot. And disrespectful, man. Yeah. But, but before that game, you know, the, the Warriors were one in five or five and one against the Celtics in the last six games. Mm-hmm. So this was definitely the Celtics trying to reverse that dynamic. You know, the, the Warriors have been the, the savvier, more experienced team against them. And that's officially out of the way for the rest of the year. The Celtics can continue to roll to the one seed. And, and they have like the fourth highest point differential in NBA history right now. And I still feel yeah, like the plus the point blowout that, will help that out. <laughs> that will do it. That will do it. And to, um, to Boston's credit, they were shorthanded too. They didn't have Porzingis mm-hmm. yesterday. And so, you know, for all the absences for the Warriors, uh, it wasn't like the Warriors were coming in on a second night of a back to back. Right. This was a, a, a four game road trip that they had won the first three games. They went from Toronto to Boston and it was a crazy trip, like the plane situation, the, the delays and all that. Uh, but man, the Celtics, until um, they're going against the Miami Heat in the playoffs, I feel like my expectations of them haven't changed. It's like LeBron with the 40,000 points. Mm-hmm. It, it, it's upsetting because we should be talking about the Boston Celtics as an all time great now, but because of 22 and because of last year, I feel like people are just hitting the snooze button until the postseason, And that is the problem. I think with the NBA regular season is they can blow out the warriors by 52 points on national TV. And yeah, people just move on like, yeah, until the playoffs, I don't think it really matters. Mm -hmm. Um, Yeah. Unfortunately, I don't think we're going to get a rematch in the postseason. What do you think, guys? No, I don't. I don't think we get that deep. But I will say um, the one thing I did miss to I wanted to know the over and under of LeBron getting past the first page of Rex Chapman's book. <laughs> oh man, you could you can set the over high enough. I'm taking the under. He's he's reading the first page. <laughs> oh wait a minute. This is where he got the third person was from Rex on the first page. The the title of the book. Hard for me to live with me. There it is. It's hard for me oh to live God. with me. Yep. Keep your oh, third eye open. We're connecting oh the dots God. here. We just yep. look. <sighs> just, yeah. Oh, <laughs> man. Oh, shout out to Rex, though. Congrats, man. Yeah. Yeah. Happy for him. Also happy for Caitlin Clark here. Uh, Trey. Bam. Never was a long shot. Shouts to Wyden Kennedy. <laughs> mm. <laughs> yes, mm. sir. Leave that, sure. leave that, leave that up there, Trey. That follow through. Yes. She's taking some real long shots though. So yes, she has. Yeah. I mean, we're, we're talking from, from the state of, of Ohio on the court. She's pulling up, hitting what feel like 45 footers. So man, are you guys, uh, the well, a part of the well, actually, group, or are you just like, hey, this is progressive? Because what is the well, actually, part of this? I don't so understand. The, so the well, actually, part about it is, Pistol Pete Maravich Jr. says, "Hey, my dad did it without threes. My dad did it in three seasons. My dad did it. You know, you know what I mean? Like, hey, then you got the basketball." People who just just excited about seeing a record broken in their lifetime. Hey, man, a record's being broken. It is what it is. I don't care if it took four years. It happened. I don't care mm-hmm. if threes were taken. It happened. It's happened to be done by a woman. Progression. Yeah. Progression. That's, that's, mm-hmm. so what side of history are you on? Are you the well, actually? Or are you a part of the progression? And... It's not it was, like she took a fifth year. She she opted not to take a fifth year. She has the eligibility because of COVID mm-hmm, to come mm-hmm. back and play another year. And she's not. She's going mm-hmm. to the league. She's, she's not even being greedy. She could probably get this thing up to five. 
I, I understand if they if she was going to pull uh, uh what's my guy from what's the Georgia court, uh, quarterback who uh took like eight years because of COVID. Oh man, yeah. What's his G? Um, or we can go with my guy Sam Hartman from uh from that Notre Dame, Bennett? who's yeah, yeah. About? Stetson Bennett's like twenty seven years old. Yeah. Sam like, Hartman what is the with well the actually here? Twenty seven years old, declaring for the NBA draft. Yeah, like <laughs> we've, we've seen it. It happens, but. The Hankies I mean, of the world. I I think it's I think it's not a well actually situation. It's a give Caitlin Clark her flowers and also give Pete Maravich his flowers. Yeah, like all of the mm-hmm. reasons that you said that people could use to like I guess diminish what Caitlin's doing is just to say no. Pete Maravich is that special and his college career, which wasn't really you're not seeing highlight clips of that because it wasn't really accessible. Maybe it's on those deleted VHS tapes, Tom, you know, but I think, I think it's equally impressive. And I mean, Kate, you know, I, since this all whole thing happened, I looked up Caitlin Clark's freshman year stats, oh. right? And it's insane. Wasn't she, she like the D one scoring leader as a freshman? She came out just as good, if not, you know, more impressive as a freshman putting up these kind of numbers. Right. I've been thinking a lot about, it was with JJ Redick and Cam Johnson on the Nets, okay. I think, when they were talking about shooting, about how it's easier to shoot when you're going to your left because you're more square to the bucket. Right. And mm-hmm. the first three threes against Ohio State is Caitlin going to her left, pulling up. Mm-hmm. As soon as she gets even close, she's wide open. And you can't defend the form it either. Is legit. Oh. I think that's the kind of the interesting thing. I'm 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 curious to see how it translates to the W, um, because the game's a little bit more physical and. You know, and yeah, like that that oh, that, yeah. that darling yeah. shit is going to change a little bit. So, um, hey. I'm enjoying the ride right now. Um, I'm pro Caitlin. You know what I mean? I'm all about it. Yeah, also, I'm pro anybody. She's Nike. got all the pressure in the world. Everyone's even rooting Le- for her. Even to LeBron. Stay I'm yeah. pro. I'm pro LeBron. Anybody Nike? I'm rolling with you, brothers. You know, y'all pay my bills. So <laughs> shout out to Scott Agnes over at uh, the Fieldhouse Files. He covers the Indiana Pacers. His Substack. I was reading God. it this morning. Scott um, had a, a really interesting, I didn't know this, but uh, Caitlin's boyfriend is an assistant coach for the uh, Indiana Pacers. Whoa. So connect the oh. dots. Blow your mind here. The Let's draft lottery, Indiana fever, catch the fever. Wow. You just blew my mind. She's going, she's coming home to Indiana. Yeah. Now, if that? only we could replicate this in the NBA and get, a great white American player going home to play in Indiana. You know, can you imagine the, uh, the Hoosier madness that would ensue from that? But I Mm. do love how now we have Sabrina versus Caitlin appointment television, WNBA kickoff already on the calendar. You know, she's, I'll be there. she hasn't even oh, got the court side. Court side? No, 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 come no. on. I would, I would love to be courtside there. <laughs> you First can't get that that ticket. That's no. a, that's that that ticket's too hot, man. That one's too hot. That's the hot. You got to call in the big guns. But I will, be, I will be in the building. I might be in a suite. Or I might. Honestly, I would like to be in the hundred section because that's the that's kind of low key better than because some course I see you can't see everything. You get what mm-hmm. I'm saying? Like yeah, Lamborghinis. I was sitting, you're too low to the ground, you know. When you're driving even, a Lambo, you kind of want to be up a little bit more. I couldn't you know? see the vantage point. I couldn't, points, see, the, I couldn't two, see the corner. I couldn't see the left corner when I sat in my seat. My last, the last game. <sighs> yeah, that is tough. That's tough, man. I feel <laughs> I'm for sorry, you. Trey. Yeah, yeah, dude. And that left corner. <sighs> I had to look at the jumbotron, bro, to get the left corner, bro. Oh man, sad, sad Funny. out here. Hey, we we've got uh we've got some stuff to talk about with the Phoenix Suns, but before we do that, gotta let people know patreon.com slash count the dings if you want to listen to this upcoming segment. We're gonna go a little behind the scenes or into the numbers on the uh Devin Booker, Kevin Durant, Bradley Beal situation in Phoenix right after the break. All right. You sent me this, Trey, mm-hmm. this soundbite from KD, which uh is saying a lot without saying too like I'm reading between the lines on what KD is getting at here, uh, that it's really hard for him to get comfortable and get in rhythm when he's instantaneously being double teamed every time he gets the ball. So the Thunder, 
just to give some context, the Thunder beat him last night. There's no Devin Booker. Bradley Beal has seven turnovers. KD, five turnovers, three assists. And he's trying to get in rhythm, and he's asked about it after the game. Yeah, I think when I get double, it's, on a, it's, it's now, now that gets the ball a for the other guys. So um, I think I did my job when you put two on the ball and you swing out. Like I said, we got good looks. Um, but uh, for me, I'm just trying to figure out ways to get going. You know, it's hard to get going in my spots when as soon as I dribble the ball, somebody come to double team, as soon as I catch it in the air, it's two people on me getting denied at a three-point line, so I can't be an off-ball player and catch and shoot. Uh, I did one. I got to catch a shoot three tonight, right, and corner then three. corner three, and then I got a wing three, and after that, it was denials from there. You know what I'm saying? So I'm trying to figure out ways to still be effective and not just stand around uh, when teams try to just fully just take me up. You know what I'm saying? That's been a game plan. And, and it's hard to, um, you know, sometimes it's hard to figure out when a great possession is going to come for me or when I'm going to get an easy look. But I'm just trying to stay in it and make the right play. And sometimes I might have to be risky with my play. And that may cause a turnover or a bad shot. I'm trying to be aggressive without just letting them take me out the game because that's the game plan. Is that fun? Like, I mean, it's fun on when you're not being double teamed, right? When you're doing the double teaming. As a basketball fan, do you enjoy? I mean, that's the defense that we claim we're we we don't get, right? And you're taking away from some offensive player that people have paid to see. Man, he's and, taking shots at his teammates here, Trey. He is. He said, well, when they, I get well, the ball out of my hands, they got good looks. They didn't well, yeah, hit they got to make shots. I mean, that's the thing. Sure, I mean that's that's obvious, clear. But at the yeah. end of the day, is this? You know, a thing like, are we going, is this going to help or hurt the game or as a paying customer of the product going to watch the game and knowing you came to see Kevin Durant score and they get double team. It's the same thing. It's almost similar to like hacker shack. If I came to see basketball and I know they about to hacker shack for the next two minutes, I'm going to be pissed. But but there's a way to pass out of a double team actually winning. There's a way to pass out of a double team tray and then get it back, right? If you ping, ping, ping out of the out of the double team and then KD cuts to the basket, he's going to get dunks every time, right? Because that rotation, getting out of the double team can actually open it up for KD. But they take him out of the play and Bradley Beal is not a point guard. We're trying this thing where Bradley Beal is going to be the go-to facilitator for the team. They don't have any point guards on the roster. They made a deliberate decision to hand the keys to Brad and to book and books gone. And here are the numbers in the 200 plus minutes with KD and with Bradley Beal on the floor with no Devin Booker. Phoenix Suns are minus 47. They are minus six per 100 possessions. Not when good. Kevin fucking Durant and Brad fucking Beal are on the floor this season without Devin Booker, that should be enough. But yesterday, OKC took KD out of the game and in those minutes, when there's no Devin Booker to save them, Trey. We got 31 rebounds from Nurkic. Mm-hmm. Didn't matter. It didn't matter. No, but that's what and I'm saying. The refs. But that's what I'm blame saying. The refs. We not even on none of that. I mean, that's the thing. It's a bad product, man. The turnovers, it's I like it's ones. Ugly, I like ones, Tom. I like ones. I like I like the head ups, man. I don't like my guys to get double teamed. I don't want to see, I don't want to claim that Damian Lillard got locked up by Drew Holiday when he's seen a blitz. I don't want to, mm. you know what I mean? Like, what happened to ones, bro? If you really like that, if you quote unquote the defensive player of the year, if you're the best defender, if Lou Dort is who Lou Dort supposed to be, guard up. Guard up. Guard oh, up. I don't, man. And here's the I, double team. And here's it's my not question about one on one, it's about no. the one. No, no, it's about a question for you and, and uh, Tony. Look, do you see double teaming as a good thing or a bad thing? Well, I I think yeah. I think it's funny that the Suns are the the anti double team team, right? Because we got Booker notoriously complaining about the double and the pickup mm-hmm. in the off season a few years back. Wow. But it, if if you're getting doubled and your team can't make the other team pay. For double teaming you, your team, this is, this is the bad. 
Yeah, this I is mean, the bet I, that they made, man. I, like, yeah, I mean, they just got to get better teammates. I mean, better yeah, players at that I mean, point. KD but, came to Phoenix because it's supposed to be I an asked, all-star and team. I actually asked the wrong question. Is double teaming a sign of respect or just a defensive strategy? I think it's a sign of disrespect to the other guys. Yeah. It's it's not about K- I don't think it's about although KD I think he could be better at passing out of and he had he said that after the game he's like I, I made some risky plays but like I was trying to be aggressive right and sometimes that ends up in turnovers um, but I just feel like when Saban Lee's you got like the supporting cast of what, what we talk about out there <laughs> Drew Eubanks look what we talk about they're passing out to Royce O'Neal where it's like when you have such a top heavy roster this is what happens you don't yes. have a lot of playmakers on the team that can make plays when you pass out of double team and defenses Mark Dagnall is gonna take advantage of that and be like yeah we're gonna get the ball out of your hands because look at who else around you bro and Nur- Nurk he went after uh, on the press conference and went after the referees blaming blaming the refs ah. a little bit for having no free throws and having 31 rebounds and what 12 offensive rebounds and no free throws I'm done with that, man. I'm come on. Bradley, here's the problem. Here's the problem. And I don't know if KD's listening to this, but Bradley Beal has 35 assists in that situation with KD and Bradley Beal on the floor. No Devin Booker. Bradley Beal has 35 assists and 32 turnovers. That's the problem. They don't have a point guard that can be the release valve for KD to get take advantage of that double team. And I just think they need to. Figure that out. They need to figure out how to get Bradley Beal to be that facilitator, that guy who can punish the double team. And they don't have that right now. So that's what I say. I got to run here. Um, Trey, Mace, go check us out on uh, YouTube, our YouTube channel, youtube.com slash count the dings. Watch the follow uh, through. <laughs> watch the follow through. And thank you for subscribing on Patreon. Uh, and go tell your buddies. Thank you. Have a blessed week.